Hi, everyone. I'm Bailey. I'm here with Matthew, and we're both product managers on GitHub Codespaces. Earlier this year, we announced GitHub Codespaces at Satellite, and the excitement from the community was overwhelming, to say the least. It was amazing just how excited the community was to be able to have a cloud dev environment so you can go from a repo on github.com to a running code space within seconds without any setup or configuration. Since May, the team has put in a ton of work in order to really continue delivering on that vision of cloud-based development that feels fast and lets you contribute projects faster than ever. No more cloning and setting it up on your local machine. We've also added thousands of people to the beta and received great feedback from our early adopters. We're excited to share this product with you. So if you're just tuning in to hear about Codespaces, or maybe you just hear my voice from a browser tab that you left running from the keynote, what we're going to do today is a bit of what's new, what's coming, and why Codespaces continues to be so exciting to so many people. GitHub Codespaces are instant cloud developer environments. Codespaces provide you with a machine you can access through a browser or your IDE, where you can write, run, debug, test, commit, and push your code from, which leads us to an important question. Why should anyone care? There's a lot of hardware out there. You're watching this on a machine that you can potentially write code on. So what is so special about Codespaces? The goal for most of us is to write great code that ships value to our customers, the open source community, ourselves, whoever that audience is. The goal is not to spend your time doing local dev environment management. Although it can consume a lot of your time and it may not be your job, your company might have a person or a team where this is such a problem that it's become their job. And hopefully you're not managing Python 2.7 anymore that's been end of life. But it's just an example to say, let's write great code and be able to write it fast. Writing great code should be about doing just that and not the periphery of machine management that surrounds it. Code spaces are available anywhere you can connect from. I don't have to worry about a machine in my office or at my house who lives. It's all just available and easy to access anywhere that I can get to a browser. We have local machines that are great for Slack, Zoom, Spotify, and whatever other apps we want to use. But there is something very compelling about developing in an environment that is consistent and managed, portable and shareable, has high reproducibility, and is accessible anywhere. We know people are excited. We've added thousands of users and received tons of feedback, and we're working to continue improving the product, really with an emphasis on making it fast. So we'll continue to expand the beta and then target a GA in the spring or summer period. And now I'm going to hand it over to Matthew and he'll walk us through a demo. Thanks, Bailey. So we're going to start here on the repo landing page. And this is a page that I love. Like it's a page of so much possibility. Every new project you come across, you're probably starting on the repo landing page. And there's so much information here. There's so much density of information. You have the code, you have the contributors, you have a readme. There's just so much to absorb here. And again, this page is like so exciting. I almost get nostalgic for it, talking about it, thinking about learning a new language the first time I came across a really exciting project or, or something I potentially want to pull into a project I'm working on and I get to the repo landing page. It's just so exciting to come here and, and want to explore this project. Maybe it's my first day on a new team, and this is kind of my first exposure to the project, the code, the readme, how it works. My only problem is like, sometimes this page can feel a little bit like a wall. It can feel overwhelming. There is so much information here. There is a readme, and sometimes that readme is really dense and explains a ton about the project. Maybe there's a lot of configuration and setup. Or other times, maybe the readme is really shallow. Maybe it's just been one or two people collaborating on a product, and they really haven't evolved it into a really robust readme yet. And while this can sometimes feel like a bit of a wall, just because there's so much here, what this page should really feel like is like a door. It should feel like a door to, to connect to this amazing project you want to get started with. And that's really where Codespaces comes in. 
And the way we get to code spaces is right from this page. We can go to the code button and right inside this dropdown, we can open this project inside of a code space. So let's go ahead and do that and talk about what's happening and what that offers us for this project. So I've created this code space. I was using it pretty recently. And I'm going to jump in and just resume an existing code space. So you'll see we connect here. And we land in what feels in really is VS Code. And it's VS Code in the browser. And for me personally, this feels a lot like home. And the reason is because I use the GitHub dark theme, and this is using the GitHub dark theme. But if I had another theme, I could have that set up and synced across my code spaces as well. You can see I have my custom bash prompt here, and my dot files are synced over automatically. So I really have everything that makes this feel like I'm developing locally. You'll even see there are some extensions that aren't standard here that don't come automatically out of the box. So I'm also able to bring in the extensions that I'm used to, that I like to work with, and use them all inside of the browser for this code space. So this is awesome. Like I have an editor, I have an editor in the cloud. It is VS Code, but it's, it's not just an editor, right? It's a full cloud developer environment. So what that means is we can go to the terminal here, and we can go ahead and run our app. And you'll see our app ran. It says it's running on localhost 3000. And you'll see I got this toast that says, my service is running on port 3000 and it's available. So let's go ahead and open this in the browser. So what's going to happen here is we're going to connect to a forwarded port from this code space, and it's going to load our app. So you'll see I have this app called Haikus for Mona. And we have some of those Octocats that Martin was just talking about. And I have little haikus that we've written about some of these Octocats. And this is really cool. I'm running a Node app. It has a Postgres database backing it. It's not super complex, but I'm able to get the full app running with a container for my web service and with a container for my database. And I can interact with it. I can do everything I would do to build this app locally. And that port is just forwarded on securely to me. So let's go back and let's stop our server. And that's pretty cool. Like we're able to run our server. We could see a change. We could see that update in real time with live reload. And that's great. But we also, again, have VS Code here. So we can do more than just run our app. We can debug our app. So let's go ahead and run this app with our debugger attached. So you'll see we have the app. Our port 3000 is forwarded again. And what we're going to do here is let's just set a breakpoint. So I'm going to create a little bit more space here. And as I said, this is a pretty basic Node Express app. And we have some endpoints that are defined here. And we have this endpoint for, for um, the heart experience. So I can go ahead and heart something and like it, and, and the counter goes up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. And we can jump right back into our code or, or our live running app. I'm going to go ahead and click this heart button. And you'll see up here, we hit our breakpoint. So we can jump over here. We can actually look at the stack. We can look at the request that came in here. We can step through this function. This is super powerful. I'm able to you know, run a full debugger of my app in the browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop the debugger for a second. And I think we need to talk about how, how is this working? Like, how did we even get to the point where I'm running this, this multi-container app and debugging it? And the way that works is via this dev container. So you'll see up top, I have a dev container. And then we have this JSON file. So let's click in here and check this out. So what this really does is provides an instruction set for how to go ahead and create my code space and what configuration I really want to bring with it. So what you'll see here is we have our app and I'm referencing a Docker Compose. I have some forwarded ports. I'm able to bring in some settings. So I wanna be using Bash, so that's brought in automatically. So this is really cool and it's really powerful, right? Cause we can go and we can check out this Docker Compose I just referenced 
And you'll see, I have two services here. I have a web service, and that depends on my database service. So we'll go ahead and we'll collapse the web service. And you can see I have my Postgres database. So when we actually go ahead and we create this code space, you have you know, your web service in a container, you have your database in a container, and then we're connected to that. And we're doing all of our development with these containers. So let's jump back here and let's walk, uh, continue to walk through this dev container. So we have a post create command. So basically I'm saying, hey, when you go ahead and create my code space, I want you to do my NPM install for me. And then this last part is super cool. So I can load in extensions. And the great part about this, again, is this is config as code. This lives in the repo. So when I put these extensions in here for the project, it means not only I get the benefit of having these things, but my team does. So we take something like ESLint, which is a tool I love to do my linting. And maybe I have a style guide for my team, and I want everyone to be able to use that same style guide. If we open it in a code space, it's preloaded there. It can be set up with our style guide. So right now I haven't, I think, finished configuring it. So if we actually did an extend here, and then we did um, ESLint recommended, we can go ahead and you actually see my index file is now raising five problems. And if we went and we went back into our terminal, you'll see I have a lot of assignments. I did some refactoring and I have some assignments that I'm actually not using and they're just sitting here in the project. So I haven't really finished my refactor, but it's things like this that ESLint can catch for me. And I can just standardize this across everyone in this project. So the code comes out really uniform. And I love that. So let's keep walking this file. And what you'll see inside of here is I also have this SQL tools extension. And this is another extension that I love. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demo this really fast. And what it lets me do is it lets me connect to my Postgres database. I can even run a query over that Postgres database to see what we're looking at. So we'll connect here. And you'll see this port 5432 is our Postgres database. We'll go ahead and we'll connect. And I'm really given this, this empty file. And what I can do here is I can just do a select star and let's look at all of our haikus. And we're gonna run this on our active connection. And you'll see the five haikus that we saw on here that are from our database are all showing up with this SQL tools extension and I can run this query. I could run a script in this SQL in this uh, SQL tools extension. This is super powerful, and this is what I love about VS Code. It is so extensible. I can do so many things with the power of, of what's available in the marketplace, and I can bring that into my code space. So this is super exciting. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm actually going to make a simple change. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to close out of these files. Let's go back to our index. You know, we're not using these, so we can get rid of those if we want. We're also getting some other things from ESLint where it's telling me I have other values. I'm not error handling. Uh, there's a lot to, to, to be desired with the code that's been written so far in terms of, you know, the API and endpoints. I can see at the bottom here, I have a, I've hard-coded port 3000, which I probably shouldn't do. So let's... Uh, go ahead and fix that up as well. Let's make this a template. And now I'm going to go back to my terminal, make sure that that still prints out as I expected. I get my forwarded port. Awesome. Everything looks great. And now if we wanted to, we could go in here, we could make our commits and push them to our repo. And this is like an awesome end to end, right? We started our repo landing page. We opened a code space. We were able to debug. We were able to run the ESLint. We were able to look at our database. We we're able to make a change. And now we could push that back all from the browser. And this is awesome for quick changes. It's awesome for my iPad. I think Ryan demoed code spaces in the iPad in the keynote. And that's like spectacular. I love to be able to do all of these things on the go and not worry about where the code is living, where the latest code is. The power of my local machine is not relevant. I'm able to connect to an even more powerful machine in the cloud. 
But I also like to spend a lot of my time using VS Code locally. And I want to go from VS Code and connect to my code space. And I can do just that. So let's go to VS Code. And I'm actually going to go to the Remote Explorer. And I've installed the Code Spaces extension. And what I'm able to do from here is I can connect to this code space from VS Code. So what's going to happen here is this is going to take a second. It's going to set up our connection. And then we're going to have our entire code space in just the state that it was, right? Because we're connected to that remote machine. So you can see my changes are here. And I can go ahead and if we want to make our commits from here, updates for live demo, can go ahead and make our changes. Everything looks good. And let's go ahead and push them. So I'm going to go ahead and push. And now our changes are back on our repo. So if I go back to the web, we can see this full end to end. I am going to use uh, the command line with this nifty little trick to go back to the repo. And you'll see updates for live demo. Here's our commit. You'll see that it kicked off GitHub Actions. So it's now running my tests. And we did all of this from the code space. Again, we, we started in the web, we opened our code space, we ran our app, we ran our debugger, we set up ESLint, we looked at everything in our SQL tools extension, we went down to the desktop, connected from VS Code, and then we went ahead and we pushed our changes and we were able to kick off GitHub Actions. So all of this just from a code space. I didn't have to do any machine configuration. It doesn't matter what else is running on my machine, what is competing for resources, how much CPU or RAM I have. I'm able to just do this from a code space. So I hope this demo was really compelling. And I hope this is really exciting to see what code spaces can do. I'm going to switch out of screen share. And I also want to plug, if I may, really quickly, Allison is doing a talk. Allison is our teammate, and it's on the developer stream. So after this, if you want to see an even deeper dive, some tips and tricks, some additional functionality I wasn't able to cover in this, if you jump to the developer stream, you can see Allison's talk, and it'll be amazing. Check it out over there. Um, the last thing I want to do is just say, like, Thank you so much, one, to the team that is building this, that is in discussions now. You can just go ahead and talk to the team in discussions. Like they're, they're like coding celebrities. You can, you can just talk to the real people that are building this. You can talk to us on GitHub community as well. Um, so definitely engage with us there. Um, in addition to that, thanks, you know, a huge thanks to the team, a huge thanks to Bailey, everyone involved in the production here, but also a huge thanks to everyone in the beta um, we know folks want to get into the beta. We are going to be adding more and more folks as we target our GA. Um, but those that have given feedback, those that have tweeted us, those that have had put things in the community, um, it's been spectacular. Like the engagement has been incredible, as Bailey said, from, from the moment we debuted this at Satellite. Um, and it's so special to work on this project because there is so much excitement. And, and it's really because of the people that are excited about VS Code, the people that are excited about this. So thank you so much for trying the beta. Um, and that's our, that's our demo. So I can't wait to kind of see some of the questions that y'all have.